What's up guys, it's Lou from Unbox Therapy, and as promised, we're going to have a little showdown video, my 15-inch MacBook Pro, this is a 2.2 gigahertz quad-core, up against the newly released MacBook Air, this is a Core i5 13-inch model at 1.7 gigahertz. Now these two machines are definitely designed for different users, but we're going to throw them up against each other anyways. So here we have it. This is the side of the MacBook Pro. And as you can see, you got a number of different options for interfacing. You have a Ethernet port, a FireWire 800, audio in and out, as well as this battery indicator. Those are all things that are unavailable on the MacBook Air. You're also going to get a Kensington lock. And of course, that super drive for reading, writing, DVDs, etc. Now on the Air, you're going to give up a couple of those, like I said. You just got the MagSafe, one USB a headphone jack, a microphone, and on the other side you've got an SD card reader, another USB, and a new Thunderbolt port. Now what you lose in expandability, I guess you'd say, you gain in ergonomics. This 13 inch is super thin and light, as I'm sure you guys know, and if you got to work with one of these things on your lap for an extended period of time, not only is it thinner and lighter, it doesn't get nearly as hot as the Pro does. And to be honest with you guys, my Pro basically sits on my desk most of the time. So that's not a huge issue for me. But if you got to travel with, with this thing, you're going to want to definitely take a hard look at the MacBook Air. So next, let's talk about the screens. They both run the same resolution, although you can upgrade the MacBook Pro screen to run a higher one. Mine is stock. And I have to say, guys, as soon as I opened up the Air, the first thing I noticed was how beautiful the screen was. It has less glare than the MacBook Pro screen. And that high resolution display being in a 13 inch form factor actually gives you a, a tighter pixel density. So I, I definitely prefer the MacBook Air screen. One downside though is it's got the old school eyesight camera. It doesn't have the new HD one. And another difference is on the F4 key you got a new shortcut button that doesn't exist on the Pro. And it's Lion specific since the MacBook Air ships with Lion. Now talking about sound, this is hands down for the Pro. I mean, this thing has decent speakers on it compared to the almost non-existent ones on the MacBook Air. I mean, the sound is fine, but you're not buying it for that. So let's run a few benchmarks, get an idea of the performance difference. Now this is Geekbench. It's going to take a look at your CPU performance. Now the first number you saw was not the real number because the capture software was running, but the real number is here, 5457 is the CPU and RAM score via Geekbench for the MacBook Air. Now let's take a look at the Quad Core Pro. And as you guys might imagine, this is going to be significantly higher. It scores just under 10,000 with the capture software running and without, it's uh, up over 10,000. So these are synthetic, of course. In everyday use, you probably won't see double the performance on a MacBook Pro, but there they are to look at nonetheless. Now this is your disk speed test. And as you guys know, the MacBook Airs all ship with SSDs now, solid state storage that is, and uh, here you can see some definitely impressive numbers, uh, 240, 245 plus on the right, and 265 on the read. Now if we look at the MacBook Pro, I've upgraded this, I threw a Vertex 3 in here, so this is not fair, <laughs> it ain't fair by any means. You can see the uh, write numbers are up around 450, and the read numbers even higher. Uh, just under 490, right around 490. Once again, this is an aftermarket upgrade. I did a video showing how to install one of these Vertex drives into your MacBook Pro. So if you want to watch that, I'll put a link up in the annotations here so you can go check that out. Um, but I'm going to recommend you guys put an SSD in either of these. If you do it in the Pro, then definitely do it aftermarket. Next, we're going to look at another benchmarking tool. This one is called Cinebench. And it's going to gauge the graphics performance of both of these laptops. Now, as you guys know, the MacBook Air has got an integrated graphics solution. It's the Intel HD Graphics 3000. And it's pretty hard for integrated graphics to hold their weight when stacked up against a dedicated graphics solution like the MacBook Pro has. That being said, integrated graphics have gotten a lot better over the years and they sure beat out some older discrete graphics solutions. So the other element to Cinebench is it's also got a CPU benchmark and basically the way this works is it 
throws an incredibly high resolution image at your machine and waits to see how long it's going to take to render it. Now, the MacBook Air is running a dual core processor, whereas the MacBook Pro has four cores. So the results of these kinds of benchmarks are pretty obvious. You don't have to be a mathematician to figure out that four cores are better than two. So here's the OpenGL figure. The graphics figure is about 10 frames per second on this test, and the CPU figure is at 2.14 points. Keep those figures in mind, because next we're going to put up the MacBook Pro and see what kind of figures it can come up with. So first things first, we're going to run the graphics test. And as I mentioned before, the MacBook Pro has a dedicated graphics solution from ATI. It's the ATI Radeon HD 6750M. <laughs> that was a mouthful. But anyways, the idea here is that you've got a dedicated solution so that it can free up your RAM and other system resources to do other things and it can chew through that video data itself. And you can see that figure already came in almost three times higher than the FPS number coming out of the air. Next, we're going to run the CPU benchmark. And once again, you can see that that image is already rendering significantly faster. And this particular benchmark is taking advantage of those four cores and eight threads at a higher clock speed so anyway guys this is pretty obvious you know these results are probably what you expected to see but which computer is right for you well that depends on what your needs are if you're going to use a lot of multimedia if you're going to do a lot of video editing or 3d rendering then i guess the choice is pretty obvious you're going to go for the macbook pro and you probably already knew that you needed it but if you're trying to replace a, a productivity computer, something for everyday life, internet, email, a little bit of YouTube, a little bit of unbox therapy here and there, then the MacBook Air is the way to go as far as I'm concerned. Great battery life, incredible form factor, and way faster than the previous generation. So anyway, guys, I hope this helped. And if it did, then maybe you'll click that subscribe button and follow me in the future. And uh, until then, until I see you around, thank you for watching. Later.